Hi. You might be in the position where you're trying to solve a homework problem where you have to deal with integrals of the wave function or probability density function for the quantum harmonic oscillator, and you're wondering how to handle that. So this is an example problem on that. And in this problem, we're going to normalize the wave function for the first excited state for our quantum harmonic oscillator. Now, the unnormalized version of the quantum harmonic oscillator's first excited state is ax e to the minus little ax squared over 2. And here, big A is going to be the part that we figure out when we normalize that wave function. Now remember, when we normalize a wave function, what we do is we integrate the probability density function, or the absolute value of the wave function squared, over all possible values. So then we set that equal to 1. Okay, we're forcing, in other words, the probability that the particle is somewhere to be 100% or a probability of 1. So 1 is equal to the integral of x from minus infinity to infinity of our probability density squared, which is psi squared integrated with respect to x. So plugging in for what our value is uh, for our wave function, ax e to the minus little ax squared over 2, and then squaring that, we get the integral from minus infinity to infinity of a squared x squared e to the minus ax squared dx. Now, this is all even functions. That a is our undetermined constant. So since it's a constant, it'll pull right out of our integral. And then we're just left with the integral of x squared e to the minus little ax squared dx. But those are both even functions. And what that means is that they're going to be symmetric about x equal to 0. So instead of integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity, we can integrate from 0 to infinity instead, and then just multiply it by 2, because it should be the same from minus infinity to 0 as it is from 0 to infinity. So now we have the integral of 1 is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of a squared x squared e to the minus little ax squared dx. Now I can look this up in any integral table that you like. I like Shams because it's not very expensive. It's less than 20 bucks. Right? It's paperback, so it's light. So that's good for me. Now, from reading the tables, the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the m power times e to the minus ax squared dx, well, the result of that is the gamma function of m plus 1 divided by 2 over 2a to the m plus 1 power. Now, if this is your first time integrating these things, you might be looking at that going, what the heck's a gamma function? Not to worry. That's also described in the Shams integral tables, or in the Shams mathematical handbook. So from the definition, also from Shams, of the gamma function, the gamma function is just this function that pops up really often when people integrate things. And so rather than you know writing down this crappy looking little function right here, they decided to give a name and call it the gamma function, sort of a shorthand, if you will. Now, from Shams, the way that they define the gamma function is they say the gamma function of some integer q plus 1 half is equal to 1 times 3 times 5 times 7 times blah, 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 all the way up to 2q minus 1 divided by 2 to the q power times the root of pi. That's the gamma function, okay? So here we have um, q is ascertained from the power of x. Here m is equal to 2, right? If you go back to what we had over here, m is equal to 2 because we're squaring x. And so that means that we're going to have the gamma function of 2 plus 1 divided by 2 or the gamma function of 3 halves, all right? The gamma function of 3 halves. So the gamma function of 3 halves is, in this case, setting q equal to 1, right? Because then it would be the gamma function of 1 plus 1 half. So if q equals to 1, then I would be going 1 times 3 times 5 all the way up to 2q minus 1. Well, in this case, 2q minus 1 is 1. So all we have on top is 1 divided by 2 to the 1 power times the root of pi. Okay? So plugging in for that, I have a gamma function giving me the result of root pi over 2. Okay? Now, the rest of it, I get 2a squared from that integral. The 2 was because it was pulled out front, and the a squared is the undetermined constant that we're trying to figure out. And then you have that divided by 2 little a to the 3 halves, okay? And that was from the earlier uh, slide on the integral. So if I plug all of that in, what my gamma function evaluates to be, then I can solve, and I end up with 1 is equal to 2 big A squared times the root pi over 2 over 2a to the 3 halves power. Simplifying that, 
I get a squared is equal to 2, a to the 3 halves divided by the square root of pi, or solving the absolute value of a is equal to the root of 2 over pi to the 1 fourth a to the 3 fourths power. So I've solved for what my undetermined constant is in um, that uh, first excited state for the quantum harmonic oscillator. Now is this super useful in and of itself? Maybe not. But is it useful in terms of you're going to maybe have to do other problems with these quantum harmonic oscillator wave functions where you perform very similar integrals? Maybe. Okay? Maybe so. Alright. So I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in class.